Hi, this is Jay McClellan, and uh, today I feel like cutting some metal, so I'm going to take this piece of steel and turn it into a slotted faceplate for my fourth axis assembly and also for my metal lathe. Uh, if you watch the videos where I made the fourth axis, you'll see I made it from uh, made it to fit this chuck, which is a three-jaw chuck that I had for my metal lathe, and I machined a, a back plate for the fourth axis assembly to match the recess in the back of the chuck. And I have a back plate that I already had at that point for the metal lathe, so that that chuck fits the metal lathe as well. So that's sort of my common uh, mounting geometry, if you will. And I recently found uh, this uh, collet chuck, it's an ER32 collet chuck, it was on banggood.com, it was under 50 bucks, and honestly for the price I think it's quite good. The fit and finish look really good. I haven't yet mounted it uh, because it has uh, three, the three mounting holes that it has need to be drilled out, they're threaded, so I need just a tiny bit of machining in order to be able to use it, but it fits onto the back plate just perfectly. So for under 50 bucks, I now also have a collet chuck that I can move back and forth between the metal lathe and uh, the fourth axis. So today I'm going to machine a faceplate with the same geometry. So again, I can take the faceplate and I can move that between the fourth axis and the metal lathe, even with parts still attached, which turns out to be really handy. I'm starting with a piece of steel that has a somewhat rough surface. It, it looks like it came off a bandsaw, and uh, it's fairly flat, but uh, not very flat. It's somewhat uneven. That'll be okay. It's just something I need to account for. And I'm going to do the layout of the initial four holes that I'm going to drill in here. And I've selected the rougher side on which to do that layout because I want the better side on the bottom as a reference on the milling machine when I drill the holes. Eventually, the three outer holes that I'm going to drill are going to line up with these threaded holes on the back plate and uh, bolts will pass through the face plate I'm making into the back plate uh, to mount it. But initially I'm going to drill those three holes and thread them so that I can use them to secure the, the new face plate to the old face plate that I already have for my metal lathe in order to do the first machining step. I had some questions regarding the video I published on the fourth axis construction of how the holes were laid out. And uh, so since it was asked, I'm going to show you three different ways to do it. Uh, one way that you could lay out the holes on a piece like this would be to drill a center hole and then take the three jaw chuck that's eventually going to mount to it and uh, clamp it onto a dowel passed through the center hole. So I could put a drill a hole in the middle clamp this onto a dowel to center the chuck up on that hole, and then I could use a transfer punch like this one. Uh, I made this from a piece of dowel rod, uh, turned it down to fit the holes in this chuck and hardened the end, and I used that when I made the original back plate for my metal lathe. But the transfer punch then could drop down, and I could use that to transfer the hole locations. That would work fine. Uh, I'm not going to do that today, but that would be a fine way to do it, and it would be adequate for this purpose. The whole locations can be laid out geometrically, and I'll, I'll show you that. It's fairly straightforward. I'm not going to use this, uh, these layouts for the actual machining. There's another way that's more accurate that I'll show you, but I am going to use these whole locations that I'm laying out now as a sanity check. I'm just using a, a thin marker, and that'll be fine as a, uh, to create sanity check locations. So I want to get the whole locations pretty close, but it doesn't have to be exact. So I just drew a line perpendicular to my reference, and so one of the hole locations is there, and then I need to construct the locations of the other two holes out here to get three in a triangle. There we go. So now I have one, two, three for my hole locations, and now I just need to uh, set the distance from the center. The bolt circle diameter on the chuck is specified as 3.307 inches, and I've set a pair of dividers to half that. And so I'll set those in the center hole location and scratch a reference mark. So that gives me the locations of my three holes. To drill these holes using positioning on the mill, I need to know the X and Y displacement of each of the holes. And the first one is easy because the Y displacement is zero, and the X displacement is just one half of the bolt circle diameter. So 3.307 divided by two, if we'll round it to 1.654. The other two uh, require a little bit of trigonometry. To calculate the X and Y offset of this point, I use the angle, which I know to be 60 degrees uh, from here relative to this horizontal axis. And so I'll use a calculator to do 60 
sine, and if I multiply that times my radius, I get 1.432. The sine gives me the vertical offset, and so my y offset here is 1.432. The horizontal offset, or the x offset, is given by the radius times the cosine of the angle. So 60 cosine is 0.5 times 1.654 is 0.827, and so that's going to be my y offset. And of course the other point is the same except that the y offset is negative. I have the part mounted on the milling machine, and I squared up this edge to the table of the, of the mill, and I centered up the mill on my center mark and zeroed out dials on the mill. And I'm just going to spot the holes first with the center drill, and then I'll drill them out uh, with an H, a letter H drill, which is uh, the closest I have to the correct uh, tap drill size for a metric M8 uh, tap. So next I'll move the table in order to drill the first hole with an X offset of 1.654 inches. Okay, now time to drill the other two holes. So first I'll crank uh, back to zero. So that table should be at zero, and just as a sanity check, I can make sure that, yes, I'm where I think I am. Uh, now, to get to my other two holes, I need to go 0.827 in this direction. And because I'm going in the opposite direction, I went past and then came back so that I'm turning the hand wheel clockwise to reach my final position in all cases. That uh, deals with the backlash of the table. Now I'll move the table forward. To get to this position, I need to go 1.432. Looks like I'm right on my mark. For the next hole, first crank back to zero and then go 1.432 in the other direction. Next I'm going to tap the three outer holes with a metric 8mm uh, tap. Uh, this will let me mount it to the face plate on the lathe to do the next turning operation. Uh, I'm going to use the mill for alignment to help me get the tap vertical. And I don't have a spring-loaded tap guide that would fit the top of this gear wrench uh, ratchet that I'm going to use. It doesn't really have the right kind of detent, so I may need to make one of those in the future. But for now I just have a, a little uh, point center chucked in the, in the milling machine, and I'm just going to line it up visually to get it pretty darn close to vertical, and that should work fine. I put a little tapping fluid on the tap, and uh, so I'll go ahead and tap the hole just lining up the top of the top of the tap wrench visually with the point center in the chuck. Okay, that's one hole done. And then I'll use the same procedure as before to, um, to move the mill into position for the next holes to give me a good alignment. To cut the corners of the plate, I'll be using this handheld DeWalt bandsaw. I'm going to use this uh, lubricant uh, wax. I haven't used it before, but I used some similar wax on wood cutting bandsaws and it works pretty well. So I'm going to rub a little of this on the blade before I start, and hopefully that'll keep the blade cool while it's cutting. Now that I have the corners trimmed off, I'm going to mount the part on this flat face plate in order to do the next operation on the lathe. And I have holes drilled uh, a little bit oversized on this face plate so that I can uh, pass bolts through to uh, put into the threaded holes that I made in the part I'm making. And I'm going to put washers like this to hold this part up in front of the face plate just a little bit because the back is not really flat, and if I tried to clamp it flat, it, it might distort the part, and then I'd turn it flat, and when I released it, it would flex back. So uh, these are going to give it just three points of contact, 
and I measured these washers and sorted out three that are the same thickness to within a thousandth of an inch. So I'll place the part being machined on like that and then put the bolts through from the back. I have it mounted to the lathe faceplate and I have that attached, but the mounting bolts are, are not tight yet. They're, they're just, just barely snug so that this part can move around a little bit. And uh, I'm going to use the tailstock with a center and uh, use that to center, center this up on the reference hole that I drilled in the center. That looks pretty good. And so now I'll go ahead and tighten up the bolts. Now that I have the blank securely mounted on my lathe faceplate and centered up well, bolts are all tightened down. Uh, the first thing I'll do is face off this rough surface. So I got my surface flat, I've got my center bore board, and next I need to cut a recess in the center so that this back plate will fit like that. This stub is 72 millimeters in diameter, so my recess needs to be 72 millimeters or 2.834 inches in diameter. Well, I'm pretty happy with how this surface turned out. When, when I use this faceplate on the fourth axis in a horizontal orientation, this is going to be the bottom side. And uh, if I'm using it on the milling machine with uh, cutting oil, then oil is going to run around the side of the faceplate toward the bottom. So I'm going to add a little drip ring around the outside. Position is not critical, but I'm a little bit inside of what's going to be the finished diameter. And so I'll just uh, cut in a little bit and uh, make just a little indentation here and that'll give me a drip ring on the outside to keep the oil hopefully away from the fourth axis mechanism. I'm back to my original setup 
with uh, the part supported on three setup blocks and uh, clamps to hold it down to the mill. But I don't have it clamped down yet, so I chucked up in the chuck a, a sharp point, and I'm just going to bring that down into the hole. I have a little chamfer on the top of the hole, and so that should give me a pretty good alignment. And then I'll, uh, I'll tighten down the clamps, just finger tight for the moment, and then tighten them down with a wrench. And uh, then I'll switch to a drill bit to drill out the threads. So I drilled the, uh, enlarged the hole to eight and a half millimeters, and uh, now I'm going to counterbore it. And I'll zero out my uh, z-axis indicator when it starts to cut. There, I went down 500 thousandths from when the counter bar started to cut, and that looks pretty good. Next, I'll do the other two holes in the same way. I put it back on the lathe. It's cutting okay. The interrupted cut isn't too bad. Well, it took a while, but I finally got the outer edge and the front face nice and smooth and cleaned up. So I'll just break the sharp edges with a file and then the lathe work will be done. That feels good. I'll just deburr the inside holes and this will be done. Well, that wraps up part one. I was able to get a really good fit with the back plate on my lathe and on the fourth axis as well. So I'm happy with that. And uh, I was able to get a good surface finish. So everything up to this point went really smoothly. And in the next part, I'm going to be machining the T-slot so that I can attach things to the face plate. And I can tell you already, things aren't going so smoothly. <laughs> so stay tuned for part two and you'll get a chance to learn from some of my mistakes. Thanks for watching.